Um, so yeah, um, this study has been done over the past year and uh, it's been, um, you know, um, a study we did in, uh, we collected some leaves from Lahore in Pakistan to characterize um, them biomagnetically. Our main aim was to have certain, to, to have certain, to come up with certain magnetic fingerprints uh, rather than the usual biomonitoring, uh, which has been, uh, you know, done over the past few past decade um, in the biomagnetic realm, and uh, this was done in collaboration with uh, Barbara Maher, uh, also at Lancaster, and uh, Rich Harrison, who's my supervisor at Cambridge. So our main focus of this was to characterize the Fe bearing particles uh, for several reasons uh, because of the um, health implications they have, um, and which have been, you know, studied before. Epidemiological studies have shown the toxicity potential of um, Fe two plus Fe three plus uh, ions on the. On, on disrupting the redox balance in humans, which can lead to lung inflammation and all those bad things, which um, was not the focus of this study, but was the was was a, was is a health implication which we um, have back of our mind to address. Um, so um, why we are doing this? Another reason could also be to feed our magnetic data into air quality models where they fail to take uh, into account these finer particles which might uh, be attached or embedded to larger particles and may go unnoticed by traditional conventional methods. Uh, the sampling location was uh, in Lahore in Pakistan. It's a metropolitan city with uh, a population of around 12 million people and lots of uh, vehicles. It was next, the, the sample location was next to a very busy road. And as you can see in this schematic, um, we sampled around 10 trees, which is next to the east, uh, east facing road. And uh, the trees, the tree leaves were sampled um, as a function of you know, uh, space and time, both. We had tree leaves, which were a year old, and we were lucky that the new growing season had started. So we managed to get leaves, which were 20 day and 26 day old, and there was no rain in between. So all those, um, you know, factors where rain can disrupt the collection of uh, the, um, you know, rain can kind of basically renew um, wash off these particulates off the surfaces and can renew more deposition. So that was something which uh, was kind of constant over the fresh grown leaves, but not obviously the one year old leaves. And they were also collected with a spatial difference. So you can see the, the uh, different locations of the trees, but all of them were collected at inhalation height, just because it was easier for me as well to not uh, go through the risk assessments and everything to get a ladder and everything else. So the methodology uh, we applied on these leaves uh, were a range of microscopy and magnetic measurements. We started with, you know, the very basic SEM uh, imaging, which we did at um, 15 kV to make sure we can image our, uh, you know, the Fe bearing particles in particular. We did XRD uh, over some powdered leaf samples as well, just to make sure if there's something else which has gone undetected under the SEM, maybe we see something. And then we had the magnetic measurements uh, where we did some room temperature uh, measurements in Lancaster. Those involved, um, you know, a, a few things. One was acquiring the ARM um, using a mole spin demagnetizer. We applied an AT uh, millitesla field, and then it was uh, there was also a DC bias um, 100 micron tesla um, DC bias field 
uh, to get ARM susceptibility. And then we also, uh, you know, did some, <clears throat> we did these, the, we, we, we measured the remnants on an Ezeco GR6A magnetometer, which uh, also had a metal shield option for uh, zero field. Uh, then we also acquired SIRM over um, different fields, uh, sorry, IRM over different fields, 100, uh, 100 millitesla, 300 millitesla, and one tesla uh, using their mole spin and their Newport, um, Newport uh, magnetometer. Um, so th those were done at Lancaster. Then our second set of measurements uh, uh, involved um, forks which were done on the AGM at Cambridge. Uh, then the, there was another set of low temperature magnetic measurements done on the MPMS. Basically, uh, we had powdered leaf samples. We had dried them down and uh, we measured um, the low temperature IRM to see how to see, to look for SP contribution and um, any evidence of oxidation. So the results, uh, basically, the aim was to what, what can we um, kind of get from a combination of these magnetic and microscopy measurements. As you can see, a very uh, simple schematic that the Fe bearing particles in particular, the ones which we were interested in were either present as discrete uh, particles or they were embedded on the surface of other larger particles or they were, you know, embedded within within these uh, particles, carbonaceous, you know, particles or any mineral dust particles. Um, these are some SEM re results we got, and this is where you can see how there are certain Fe bearing particles which uh, were embedded on top of a calcium aluminium silicate. You can see a very, you know, um, nice spherical looking. Uh, magnetite particle, potentially magnetite, it has both um, iron and oxygen signals coming from it, sitting on top of an, a, a, you know, an aluminum silicate. So this is, this is where our, what we are trying to focus on that when these traditional PM monitors, when uh, it's, it has, if it, it has a filter of PM 2.5, and if there are certain finer particles which are attached to these surfaces, they might go unnoticed in, um, you know, in, in, in these traditional measurements. Um, so, sorry, I actually forgot to also tell that we also took some certain known um, samples of vehicles and and uh, brake pad uh, dust and vehicle pipe, exhaust pipe emissions um, residues. So this was to basically kind of compare what we see on the leaves and what we see from potential sources, traffic related sources, vehicular related sources, do they kind of match or not? So this is a brake pad dust residue um, sample. And this shows the, the presence of metallic iron and also the presence of a iron bearing phase, which is possibly has iron oxide, but also uh, something which is calcium silicate. This is a petrol pipe exhaust dust residue sample, which also has this Fe bearing um, phase, but also something else within that. Um, this is a diesel pipe exhaust dust residue. You can see there's iron sulfate or, you know, uh, some form of uh, uh, maybe very, very magnetic or, or an iron sulfide phase uh, present in these particles. So the idea was to um, characterize them using different methods and to compare what different magnetic granulometric, uh, you know, certain, uh, you know, um, graphs can tell us about the relationship of, of these particles. So this, this graph over here is basically ARM susceptibility normalized to the SIRM plotted against the MDF, um, which is uh, basically a mean destructive field. It tells us, uh, it's, it's basically tells us when you're, um, when you demagnetize 
the 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 the, part, the, the samples in in an AFD magnetizer, how much of the remnants it loses. Uh, this is this is plotted over there. This is the susceptibility plotted, and you can see that the leaf samples plot over a range um, of um, of 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 uh, area over here, and then our brake pad samples are sort of plot over there and the petrol exhaust plots over there in the in the fine um you know in the finer interacting grain uh space latent space but one thing to note would be that the uh, this particular plot is for sized magnetites and i and if our samples which had any iron oxide and if any of that was surface oxidized uh, magnetite this uh, you know should also be taken with the with caution because this is not necessarily an exact representation of uh, grain size distribution we also plotted our results on a lasco plot which is basically also um is is, is like an alternate kind of a thing for a uh, alternate kind of a plot for grain size distribution here is ARM susceptibility normalized over SIRM, the same uh, axis as the this figure. And then this is the uh, MRS over MS, basically, on the y-axis. And you can see how our leaf specimens plot on the um, interacting single domain and multi-domain line, which is very, which is in, in, in um, uh, you know, in uh, agreement with this particular figure. But then you can also see our, our brake pads plotting somewhere over here near the MD region. Uh, so this is where um, you know the forks would come in, and we uh, basically just before going to the forks, um, we had some we did some low temperature magnetic measurements, which were done on the uh, MPMS uh, using the you know um so so the protocol we applied we did four uh particular measurements to plot these two um these two uh graphs and this rt room temperature sirm cooling graph was basically uh you, we applied a two and a half tesla field and then we sweep the temperature from 300 uh kelvin which is room temperature to 10 kelvin and then we warmed from 10 kelvin to back to 300 kelvin to basically see for any um evidence of of where we transition to uh to to uh, identify magnetite um and then there was another uh, set of measurements which was basically zero field cooling and field cooling curves these were done by uh, measuring low temperature SIRM while warming to 300 Kelvin, which is from 10 Kelvin to 300 Kelvin, and then uh, cooling it back, but then uh, then measuring, uh, applying a two and a half Tesla field, and then uh, measuring the resulting field cooled uh, uh, low temperature SIRM from 10 Kelvin back to 300 Kelvin. Um, curve. So two things to notice, the key takeaway over here, one is that the zero field uh, cooling curve, uh, the, the LTSIRM was always lower than the uh, ZFC was always lower than the FC. So broadly, mostly our samples were dominated by single domain grains. Uh, another thing to notice in these three leaf samples, in two of these in particular, this is a one year exposed leaf sample where you can see a humped shape which has been attributed uh, by Ostermeyer and Dunlop in 2010 in their 2010 paper to um, being characteristic um, of uh, surface oxidized magnetite and you can also see how the um, kind of the trans the verbal transition is not norm is, is normally at 120 but we observed around at lower temperatures which also um, kind of uh, supports the idea that most of our magnetite-like particles were surface oxidized. And then you can also estimate the SP fraction by basically measuring the uh, room temperature SIRM over there 
and subtracting this value from this zero field um, lo uh, low temperature SIRM where the SP uh, fraction which uh, where, which is where you get this higher fraction because these SP particles, which are unblocked at um, room temperature, gets blocked uh, at these lower temperatures and act a more single domain like. Oh, this is something which I've already discussed the hump profile and the dampened. You, you've got, you've got one minute left just to. Oh, okay. Um, so quickly going through temporal spatial variation. This this is this basically wasn't our focus, but then you can see there is some variation as you go away from the road, and then this is the most important part. So I have a minute to explain that, and then um, you can see that how the forks are in particular uh, very useful in in in. Um, kind of differentiating these fingerprint uh, these different sources you can see how our leaves in these um, backfield uh, remnant uh, coercivity um, distributions lie somewhere in between these our brake pad residue dust samples and exhaust dust samples and how the uh, leaves basically um, have both a high coercivity ridge and a low coercivity ridge component, which is which basically gives us kind of a ballpark idea that it is a combination of this MD brake signal plus something which is coming from the exhausts. But you know the the magnetic granulometry results just showed our brakes to be in the MD region and fails to you know recognize something which might be more um, related to this single domain like structure over there um, conclusions that um, we can use forks to potentially identify these particulate sources um, the, the we found high concentrations of fe bearing ultrafine particles in both our specimens uh, but they weren't exactly seen in our sem because of the, the lack of resolution, uh, but we need to address two complications. One is that the relatively higher noise levels of our fork data, um, if, if the samples are weak, for example, the fresher samples, and that the possibility that any metallic iron, which pos uh, originally comes from brake wear, is oxidized over time on the leaves. This is just some further work. Do I have another minute or so, or should I just wrap? Uh, I, I think if we do that, then we won't have any time for questions. So, okay, that's that's um, okay. Does anyone have a quick question after this? And acknowledgements to Rich Harrison, Poyan, um, Mohammed Rafi, uh, Cheng, Iris in Cambridge. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, no, no Thanks again for the interesting talk. Um, are there any questions here? We've got time for one quick one. Yeah, Adrian. Hi, I got a well, thanks very much for the talk. I've got a very quick question. So I just maybe you can just what your thoughts on this. We've just been doing some bio biomagnetic monitoring last term as part of undergraduate projects. And what we found is that, well, what I found compared to filter samples is that the the particles that you find on the leaves are much, much bigger than the ones you find. If you you know if you if you use a filter paper, so I was just wondering. So I'm just wondering if you'd find the same effect that the, the leaves only seem to attract the, the larger particles. When I say much bigger, I mean like a micro as opposed to that. So the, the stuff we did with the filters, we were the average grain size was down at you know 15 nanometers or so. So it's you know it's a very wide range. I was wondering if you'd found that. And it could also be an effect of what type of tree you look at as well, of course. So yeah. So. Uh... So was the the filter samples um, were they located at the same locality exactly the same locality as the tree? Um, yeah, we've been sampling in London, so we've been working with King's College, and they have they have all the filters to sample. So we've been sampling both, uh, with taking trees near uh, tree samples near the, the, the monitoring stations and, and, and distal to that. Mm -hmm. Well, that. 
you know that could be uh, like you said um you know a combination of different factors one could could be the, the leaf surface itself attracting certain particles um so when we did our you know uh, when we did low temperature uh, sir measurements on the mpms we still did get a very high number sp of sp fraction around 50 percent on our leaves uh, but obviously that was lower than what we got on our uh, break specimens and the exhaust specimens so that is actually a very important thing to actually note if, if it's uh, pref preferentially attracting certain particles our kind of results might not be accurate representation of what there actually is so, so for your break specimen just another follow-up for your break specimens and your and your exhaust specimens were they taken from the test centers or were they taken from real cars because my my experience is that if you get stuff from the test centers they don't match up with the signals that you get from cars that have been driving for a long period of time mm -hmm. they were taken from the cars in lahore all right uh, okay right well that's probably important right. yeah thank you all right thanks uh, there's a like question that. from connell what makes the particles stick to the leaves some form of wax um, well, the, some 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 leaves do have wax, uh, but like the ones I um, sampled had had these hairy um, hairy uh, trichomes you call them, and they some leaves are better at attracting uh, these particles. Uh, but my my study mostly focused on just. Um, characterizing the particles. So the number of particles are wasn't really a question of like, you know, the, the wasn't wasn't really um our focus in the study. Yeah. Uh, no, I just started thinking about actually I started thinking about Adrian's question mm -hmm. about you know why what the size fractions you get on these might be different from the size fractions you get on on particular filters. And I was just wondering if, you know, clearly there might be something in the way they're trapped in, in each of those two um, setups um, that, yeah. that, that might explain the difference. I don't I think a, a good way to test this would be just exactly standing next to the same height level and, and then sampling yeah. over. Have, over. A, have a leaf and a filter next to each other. Yeah, and then, and then doing some form of like, study where you kind of quantify the let's say the the fraction the size fraction of it uh, i don't know like maybe using low temperature measurements but then that would only give us the magnetic uh grain size fraction but what if there are other finer particles which can obviously go unnoticed uh, so yeah that's a good point <clears throat> 